Welcome to the Legacy Lost Radio and Music Paradise Show. We're in hurricane season. We have Tropical Storm Alberto coming. And um, for emergency purposes, I've programmed a couple of the MERS channels in here uh, in case I need to talk to people, um, what do you call it, not licensed on the ham. And uh, technically, it's not a good idea to run this, even though it's only 5 watts. I'm running this off a uh, Diamond X50, about 21 feet up in the air. And uh, that's my buddy. He's three and a half miles away. That's Dennis. He's a GMRS operator. And he's got one of those Dakota Alert um, intercom things on a uh, J-pole. About 20, same height as this. And he's about three and a half miles away running two watts. So we're going to give this a try. Okay, Dennis. Uh, we're on MERS Green. I was just explaining how you're using the Dakota Alert hooked up to a J-Pole cut for the 152-462 band. I am running this uh, low-power TYT on MERS Green for a hurricane and local emergency communication test for backup. And uh, just showing how it sounds three, um, three and a half miles away with two watts. not getting too much of a signal on you there only have got one or two uh, bars as they would say but uh, considering the distance and we're not very high up and I got a tree right in the way basically blocking you that's not too bad and uh, like I said we use this for emergency local things if uh, for example the, the uh, GMRS or uh, ham is down or even the CB or whatever uh, this is pretty much you can talk to anybody with this handheld uh, walking down the street here, going to, going to the pier or something, you know, we can talk to family members and stuff on the MERS, on the uh, walkie-talkie handhelds here and, or whatnot. But uh, this is, again, part of the Dakota Alert system. I just want to let people to hear what it sounded like three and a half miles away on an antenna 21 feet or so up in the air. I think that's where it's at, and it's a uh, arrow J-pole, open stub J-pole. And uh, talking two watts to five. Yeah, ten four on the open sub uh, J pole. Uh, like I said, um, they definitely doing a job for three and a half miles away. Like I said, it's a uh, inexpensive radio, so you're not going to get uh, quality uh, audio in comparison to a CYT or some sort of a commercial mobile transceiver. But uh, it does uh, do the job, like you hear right now, and Yep, sure does work good. Um, you can put tones on some of these radios too if you want the more of a privacy. Um, there's five channels. Um, do you have the capability to go to MERS 182? We can try that. That's one of the narrowband channels. Yeah, that's affirmative. And also, uh, before I uh, fail to mention here, it's also got a uh, call indicator button with the press the call button. It sends out a uh, paging alert to over the airwaves to also uh, get your attention to uh, address the other end user that uh, somebody is being paged and not as well called. So let's uh, go to the other channel on that note. Uh, it's going to take me a second to find out which channel is what here because I have not used this very often. Okay, yeah, we'll try that because I know that one's a narrow band FM and these two channels are uh, supposed to be wide. So let me try switching to uh, MERS 1, 151, 820. 
Okay, I'll do a couple seconds of key in here just to see if you can pick me up so you know what channel you're on. And I'm not sure we'll, we'll do a follow-up video of the actual radio, but this is an actual real-world test of the Dakota Alert system. That's the front of the I see you're on the water frequency here, and it does appear to do what a quarter hour control order here, so uh, it's working on picking you up just fine. Okay, QSL, yeah, I think the audio is just a hair better on the narrowband channels, actually. That's probably because your audio is actually uh, being compressed, and actually, if I'm not mistaken, somebody enlightened me there on uh, the correction, but I think with a narrow band, it does uh, compress the audio a little better to where you can also have more users on a channel as well as a adjacent channel without the interference. Yeah, QSL. Okay, well, I'm going to load this up here. We can do a follow-up video maybe tomorrow or something. Uh, we'll uh, do a little demonstration. There's a lot of videos on uh, YouTube about that radio already. The guy did, like, a map, and he showed it. And he, there's a bunch of people showing them. But this is an actual real-world base-to-base test. And, again, this is uh, this is for an emergency thing. Basically, uh, you know, if there's... Uh, you know, mostly we just use handhelds. I got the one watt and the two watt Motorola handheld I use, and this is for emergency purposes and for hurricanes and whatnot, mostly. And uh, you know, so uh, but it does work. Um, it shows that we're getting out three and a half to four miles as the crow flies, about twenty feet off the ground, and uh, running five watts or less. So you can see how well it works. And uh, okay, all right, we'll test that out, and I'll let you go see that. And uh, we hope everybody enjoyed the uh, video here, and uh, also uh, hope everybody... Yeah, 73 is uh, at the very end of that transmission. I think a uh, data interference uh, from a telemetry station nearby wiped you out. But anyways, uh, good talking to you, and I look forward to doing another test with you. Okay, 73 is... Okay, we'll talk to you in a little bit. I'll upload that, and then uh, I'll let you know when it's up there. So we'll talk to you in a little bit. 73. Alright, thanks for watching.